GamesWeasel.com Review. I'm in Amsterdam for the launch event for the 3DS. Now soon Jonathan Ross is going to be on this stage and he's going to be joined by some special guests who are going to go through the hardware itself and also some of the software titles. Thank you. Thank you very much. I don't think I'll be needing these. Uh, welcome everyone, thank you so much. The 3DS looks like a normal DS from the outside, apart from the two cameras on the lid which are used to take 3D pictures. Open it up and you'll see a circle button above the D-pad, which feels really good to use and much better than the one on the PSP. You'll also notice the 3D screen at the top is now widescreen and the touch screen below is left pretty much as it was. On the right side is a 3D slider to adjust how much 3D you actually see. You'll definitely want to adjust this depending on the game you're playing and how your eyes can handle the 3D. Personally, I only had the 3D just switched on from the 2D position, and that was enough for me without starting to see double images. You're also going to have to hold the 3DS pretty still whilst you play, or you'll lose that sweet spot and get distracted. There's an SD card slot at the side with a 2GB card bundled with it and the handheld's a lot more powerful this time. Games are far more detailed so you're going to be playing the types of games you'd play on a console on it as well as have fun with all the touchscreen stuff you're used to. The 3DS also has much improved online functionality. It will connect automatically to Wi-Fi hotspots and scan other 3DSs in standby mode, allowing you to collect other people's Miis in the Mii Plaza and see which games they've just been playing. So what are the games like? Well, after the presentation, we were invited into this white but cold area to play on some of the games and watch demos of others. Inside this bus was Resident Evil The Mercenaries 3D, which takes the point scoring mode from the console games to the handheld. The graphics were awesome and the 3D certainly gave things more depth. A more story-driven game called Revelations was also viewable in the cinema area, along with the sublime Metal Gear Solid Snake Eater and Mario Kart, which I'm both looking forward to playing. Dead or Alive is back, so this time you can see things <clears throat> bounce around in your face and use the touchscreen to pull off complicated moves or as a move list to refer to. The same control scheme can be said for Capcom Street Fighter 4. Super Monkey Ball was on show from Sega and Kid Icarus is back, this time giving you a bit of cramp thanks to an awkward way of holding the 3DS during the Space Harrier-esque gameplay mode. Along with a brand new Zelda adventure, Pro Evolution Soccer looking great and a new Splinter Cell game on the way, it's easy to see there are tons of great titles to look forward to that will appeal to more hardcore gamers. And of course I've just scratched the surface of all the games that were available to play on the preview day. The 3DS will be out on the 25th of March in Europe and the 27th of March in the US, but the price point may be an issue, coming in at 249 US dollars and an estimated 229 pounds in the UK. I did hear lots of grumbles and genuine concerns that this new DS may price some people out. Whatever the price, it's still an exciting machine. Personally, I'm not massively into 3D anyway, but I am looking forward to playing the games, despite the fact I'll probably play most of them in good old fashioned 2 I was going to try and take one of these home, but um, there's a little bit of a flaw in my plan. Oh, they have to go take me too. Yeah, I'd rather not. <laughs> You've been watching a review from Games Weasel. If you want to get the show each week, which includes video game reviews, news, previews, competitions, and special features, then head over to gamesweasel.com for our video podcast, Games Weasel TV. Gamesweasel.com.